purchased a set of toners to refill our color laser printer. So it includes toners and also a set of chips that go on the toners that tell the printer that it's been replaced. Um, let me know if you want to see a video of how to do a toner recharge. I'm sure it's not a lot involved with it, but yeah. Let me know if you want to see how I did it. G'day YouTube, JB from Oz. Today I'm going to attempt to do a toner recharge. This is a color laser Fuji Xerox C3300. It's got a chip here, which we get a replacement chip. It's black, magenta, cyan, and yellow. So it's important to match, obviously, the yellow one to the yellow cartridge. The yellow toner to the yellow cartridge. And I've got the other cartridges there, the uh, cyan, magenta, and black. So I've got the cyan, magenta, and black. Now, process on the document suggests starting with a safety razor, which, which I have one of these here, to take off this end plastic to clean up the surface of adhesive to replenish the toner from the bottle and to tape it up again. Now I thought initially these were high capacity cartridges but they're not. So a high capacity cartridge would have this and this covered with a yellow mark visible. The low capacity one is just the bottom one. So I'm expecting in use that I will only have enough space to populate the bottom cartridge. I'm attempting to provide some sort of stability for the cartridge as I open it and refill it. This stuff is a really fine dust and it will go everywhere is the theory. So don't fuck it up. Don't touch the face of it. Don't get any oil or dirt or fingerprints or marks or anything on that. Which I might have already done. Oopsie. See if I can get my assistant to video the process. This part. Quite easy. See anything down the hole? Now I've shaken the toner up and when it's filled with air it's kind of like a floaty liquidy sort of appearance. See how it's filling the whole bottle? We want to get to about half the bottle full I reckon. Now they say with this stuff goes everywhere. If you puff it. You're already doing this on my dining table without a drop sheet? Oh yeah, of course. Go hard or go home, baby. Let me just... Now we have a hole. 
Okay. The nozzle's going back on. Can I squeeze it? See that going in? Mm -hmm. Letting it go, get some air back up. seen the hole very easily okay that's a bit easier they do warn not to totally fill because it can overfill and they say this is the high yield so what do you reckon the plat safe mm-hmm very safe okay fuss fuss okay so can you see anything down the hole? I'll drip the other powder. Mm. Quite a moment down the hole. Mm. I don't know. I reckon it's still got more room. <laughs> Take a sec, you can always do this again. Okay, so it's about there for... Yeah, okay, let's play it safe. Can I please, my lady? So at this point, wiping clean. Burnishing it down. What do you reckon? Contact. That might be number one done. So we've got a cap back on a bottle and snapped on. And away from the dogs. And then the next thing we need to do. screwdriver and a chip.
theory that even though it doesn't have these two little dougalers on it, is the yellow one done? Okay, is it already plugged in, do you know? The diagnostics so far, we've plugged power in to the printer. It's got an on-off switch which runs up to this power board at the top. And I saw this evidence of pixie smoke, which when I pull the board out, might have a thing or two to do with why this power supply is no longer working. Primary and secondary, bam. Okay, so the other thing I've noticed, I had a spare Xerox 3210, which is different from the 3300, but has a surprisingly similar power board architecture. The same inputs and same outputs, albeit different components. And I think this is probably because this one is a heavier duty supply. It's saying on here 250 volt 10 amp on the input side. Um, I think the, the older printer maybe had higher power draw requirements. And so it looks a little bit beefier. So I think I'm gonna be okay slapping this supply into that printer. All the mounting positions look the same. All the power lines look the same. So we might have just lucked out. That's the new board in place. Now we'll wire it up, see if it works. Okay now, for the moment of truth. <sighs> Green lights. Power. Action. We might have just fixed the printer, love. Yay. So now we can get back to <laughs> refilling the toners, <laughs> which is the whole point. You know what the clicking is? I'm not going to risk reprint magenta cartridge cyan replacement. No yellow? Magenta cartridge cyan cartridge replacement. No yellow? Nice. Yay! We fixed the yellow. Woohoo! Alright, so I've just done the magenta and had a little spill. This cloth that they supply it must be like a microfiber or something designed to attract this toner and hold onto it tight. So very handy having that. Um, I spilled it because I tipped the bottle over before having it in the hole and it just dropped a little bit. But cyan next, then black, then we uh, do a test print. So far it's been pretty good. Okay. Well, that is job done. Swapped out the cartridges. Hey, power even came on. Which of course was the problem last time, is that I went to test the yellow and the bloody thing had died on me. You helping, Wayne? Hey? You helping? Did you fix the printer? Did Tucker fix the printer? Who fixed the printer? I don't know. 
but it is ready to print. It worked. Now we do a test print. Should we do a test print leg? Do you think? Or fish? Do fish. Test print. Hey, he wants his present done. Um, that needs to anyone. Hey, shows it's full. Woohoo! Okay, test print. Colours look alright. Um, there's a bit of what looked to be lack of toner adhesion. So I'll have to have a look over that, give a longer term response. Megan said this paper was probably dusty as well. So it doesn't help. It's in quite a heavy lay down area there with the black and the blue though. So it's fine on this side. Uh, maybe just the paint hasn't been moving for a while. It needs to have a few pages go through it. Ah, that's the result. The colour's back in the picture. Can't shoot.